everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. I'm excited for another expression episode today. This is going to be a two-part lesson. In the first part, the expression part of this episode, you'll hear a joke, you'll do some pronunciation exercises, and you'll learn the common English expression, up one's alley. In part two, we're going to be talking about Mardi Gras in New Orleans, which is in Louisiana. And that is a massive annual party at the beginning of each year. Celebrations there include parades, floats, crazy costumes, parties, and more. And in that lesson in part two, you'll gain the historical understanding of the event and how to take part in it if it is up your alley, if it's something you'd be interested in. Be sure to stay tuned for part two to learn all about the wild celebration. Let's go ahead and start with a joke. Are you ready? I'm going to tell it to my husband and let's see if he understands. Once again, my husband is Brazilian. Hey, hun. Yeah? Did you hear about the two peanuts walking down a dark alley? No. One was assaulted. <laughs> All right, so you couldn't hear him laugh in the audio, but he did quietly, obviously not as hard as I did. Um, anyway, this joke is a one-liner. It's a joke with one line. It's a one-liner. The humor, well, apart from the fact that there are walking peanuts, because that would be odd to see walking peanuts, the humor comes from the wordplay with assault. A salted peanut is one with salt on it. An assaulted peanut is one that is verbally or physically attacked. To assault someone is a verb. So a salted peanut or an assaulted peanut. But with the joke, you can't really tell the difference uh, with that word. Let's hear the joke one more time. Hey, hun. Yeah? Did you hear about the two peanuts walking down a dark alley? No. One was assaulted. Let's move on to the expression <laughs> of the day, which is to be up one's alley. We'll go through the definitions of the individual words first, and then we'll go through some example sentences. Up can be a preposition or at times an adverb. Up means the opposite of down. The electrician went up the ladder and onto the roof. Ones is a determiner, and it means belonging to a person or people in general. It's one's choice whether they'll be happy or sad. It's an individual's choice. Allie is a noun. It's spelled A-L-L-E-Y. And it is a small passageway between two buildings or more, or just a lane between two barriers. Alleys are often dark, and at nighttime, they can be pretty scary. It's where many businesses and residential properties leave their trash cans. It's where drug deals often take place. Many alleys are not very nice. An alley can also be a bowling alley. So a bowling alley is a place where you go bowling. So if something is up your alley, it means well-suited for you and your interests. It's your style. It's something you'd like doing, seeing, or enjoying. Since my daughter loves sweets, going to a candy store would be up her alley. It's something she'd be interested in. 
In English, we also have the expression to be one's cup of tea. You can use one's cup of tea and up one's alley interchangeably. They're synonymous. They're synonyms. My daughter loves sweets, so going to a candy store would be her cup of tea. Or it would be up her alley. So where does the expression up one's alley come from? The history of this expression is somewhat convoluted. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, a version of this expression dates back to the 1600s, when people would say something is from one's own province to mean it's of interest to them. Earlier uses include up one's street. So because it's close to your area where you live, it's considered more interesting for you. Anyway, we do not use up one street anymore, at least in American English, and we also do not use one's own province, at least from my understanding. Up one's alley, however, is really common. Let's go through some examples to see how we can use this expression in different contexts. Example number one, a long time ago, I talked about my friend Heike. She's German, and ironically, like her name, <laughs> she loves to hike. She once brought me into the mountains in Santa Barbara on what I thought was going to be a casual hike. But by the end, we were scaling rocks, in other words, climbing on the side of rocks, and we needed to jump in pools of water to get back down to solid ground. <laughs> the point is, she's an adventure enthusiast. She once asked me to go skydiving with her, and I responded, oh no, skydiving is not up my alley. It's not my cup of tea. It's not my jam. It's not something I'm interested in. I'm sorry, you're gonna need to go with someone else. It's really not up my alley. Example number two. Just last week, I asked Lucas if he'd be willing to go to the WB studio with me to do a tour. At the WB studio in Burbank, California, right near Los Angeles, they have the set for Friends, The Big Bang Theory, and many other shows. I thought it would be up his alley, considering he learned English, or the majority of his English, with Sheldon. Leonard, and the characters from The Big Bang. He loves that show. To my surprise, he told me it's not his jam. It's really not his cup of tea. Seeing the behind-the-scenes stuff isn't on his to-do list. It's not up his alley. He's not interested in it. So I guess I'll be going alone. Example number three. Imagine that you are a big party animal. Your friends call you the life of the party. You chat with everybody, make conversation easily, and boost the mood of any social gathering. In English, we might refer to you as a social butterfly. As a social butterfly, you feed off of people and love big events where many people gather, like Mardi Gras. Going to an event like Mardi Gras is right up your alley. You might invite a few friends with you and have the experience of a lifetime. It's something you'd really enjoy. Mardi Gras is your jam, your cup of tea, your style. It's right up your alley. So the next time someone asks you if you'd like to do something, see something, or eat something, whatever it is, you can say, oh yeah, that's right up my alley. Or, no thank you, that's not really up my alley. Let's do some pronunciation exercises. We'll use the statement, it's right up my alley. Repeat after me. It's right. It's right up. It's right up my alley. It's right up my alley. Notice how right up 
sounds like one word with a flap T in the middle. Right up. Right up. Right up. It's right up my alley. Let's go through the conjugation. Repeat after me. It's not really up my alley. It's not really up your alley. It's not really up his alley. It's not really up her alley. It's not really up its alley. It's not really up our alley. It's not really up their alley. I love this pronunciation exercise because it illustrates some of the most common reductions in English. For example, your sounds like your. It's not really up your alley. Up your, up your, up your alley. It's not really up your alley. His sounds like is when it's preceded by a consonant. It's not really up his alley. Same with her. It's not really upper alley. In American English, at least, we don't give equal value to every word. It would take too long for us to express our ideas, so we speak quickly and we eat certain letters as we go along. We give value to only what's important in the sentence. For example, you'll often hear nouns emphasized, verbs emphasized, or content words. If you're interested in learning how we do that, whether you want to improve your accent or not, check out the American English Accent course. You'll find the link to it in the episode notes. All right, that's it for the first part of this two-part episode. Be sure to continue to part two, where we'll be talking about Mardi Gras in New Orleans. You won't want to miss it, especially if you're a social butterfly or just someone who is the life of the party. Hope you're having a nice day. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.